So for this here, for the MRP equals MRC. That's that profit maximizing number of workers to hire. I'm gonna be honest with you though. Like they could also say this about capital or they could say it about any of our other resources. So just know that, that threw, that, that threw people off one year when they asked about um, not workers, but capital and people were like, oh my God, I don't know, but it is. Okay, the other one that I have there, it's like, if you don't know this formula here of the MRP equals the marginal product times the price of the good, I think that you should just question as to whether you should even take this exam because this is the one we got to know for the labor market. Like it used to always be that this was the one, like I would say, you have to know this. Uh, nobody knows it. Now everybody's got their formulas and stuff. So um, I guess we've got that in front of it. But this is where if they're going to ask me questions on the labor market about things changing, I'm coming back to this formula because that's a big one. The productivity of the worker, um, this one here, think about how the marginal cost curve and the marginal product curve, remember the marginal cost curves are Nike swooshed, it's U-shaped. Um, the marginal product curve is the mirror image of that. And so that's where it kind of is like, I don't know, a fountain or something, I don't know, where it's going up and then down. That's our marginal um, productivity because at first you have the increasing returns because there's just so much work to do. So the division of labor totally makes sense. And then people start to get in each other's way and it starts to um, do that. So the productivity of the worker um, is the marginal product over the price of labor. They could also say the marginal cost, you know, cause you want to pay them that additional cost is how productive they are. This is a big one. The PG equals the wage rate divided by the price of the, ooh, this should be the marginal product of labor. I know I was missing something. Think about this one when you are doing things and they ask you about different stuff. This has been the new thing that the college board has asked the last couple of years. So this is our wage rate divided by the marginal productivity of labor. Um, and then these to me are like plug and chugs. You've got your least cost rule, which is the marginal product of labor over the price of labor equals the marginal product of capital over the price of capital. And then you've got your um, profit maximizing rule, which is the MRP of labor over the price of labor equals the marginal product or the MRP of capital over the price of capital equals one. Got to remember the one. That's where they get you right? So these to me are the formulas that we need to know for unit five um, when we're looking at it. So the things that I think about with unit five when, when we're talking about stuff is that, yeah, we can get into like the simple stuff here. I, I think it's like the simple stuff here when we're talking about the quantity and the wage rate of the market. Um, if we're talking about perfectly competitive, we're talking about like the unskilled workers. And so that's where you can have the demand for labor. And this is the supply of labor, which gives you the equilibrium wage rate. And then this would be the quantity of the workers is dotted because they're wage takers. So they take the wage from the industry. And so this is where you have here your quantity um, and then you have your supply, which equals the MRC or we could say the MFC. I kind of feel like they use MFC now more, the marginal factors cost. This here is equal to the wage rate. You have your demand for labor, which equals the MRP which equals the VMP, in case they use that, the value of the marginal product. So some key things to remember here is first off that formula of MRP equals the marginal product times the price of the good, right? This is the firm. Um, and so when we're looking at things here, I can talk about the product market from unit one, 
where we talk about how things change in the product market and maybe there's an increase in demand because of taste or preferences. Well, when that happens here then, if there's an increase in the price of the good, because that's what would happen, that will cause an increase in the demand for the workers. It's a derived demand. The demand for a resource is derived from the product it, pro it produces. There are two things that affect the demand for a resource, productivity and product price. And so that's what we're looking at here when we're talking about it. But to be honest with you, the one that they could really have fun with this year and they could really ask you about is the productivity side of it. Because you've got to remember about diminishing returns, right? And because of that, this is where you have changes that are happening um, because of the productivity. The reason that it is downward sloping is because of diminishing returns. With all of the resources held constant, with the increase of one variable input, which is the worker, output increases at a decreasing rate. Yeah, you still get more output from the additional worker, but the rate of change isn't as large. So if we were to find that something happens where there's an increase in the demand here in the market, right? Well, that causes an increase in the wage rate. Well, what happens here is that what happens from this increase in price to the productivities of the worker? Well, if the wage rate is going up, you have a decrease in the quantity of the workers in this firm, and you have an increase in the productivity, right? That marginal product is going up. So if you find a question where you have a movement that's happening along the curve, think about diminishing returns. Think about how productivity goes up because less workers are being hired within this firm. Most people, I don't feel like, would naturally always think about that because they would just be like, oh, wage rate is up, you know, so therefore that's got to be all good. The other way that I could make a wage rate go up is that I don't have to shift this curve here. Instead, I could have a floor that happens um, in this firm. Do you remember what that's called, a floor that happens in the labor market? That's our minimum wage, right? If the government were to come in here and set a floor, well, now I've got a minimum wage that happens. I think that there's really great questions that can come about here. They can ask you what happens to the quantity of workers because of it. They could ask you in the market what gets created. You know, like when I teach micro and macro, there's certain things that I always say, look at the question to see what they're asking. For macro, it's long run versus short run. Are they asking me a long run question or a short run question? For micro, it's about market versus firm. Did they just ask me a market question or did they ask me a firm question? Because if they ask me what happens to the workers in the market, well, I need to talk about, about a surplus of workers here and unemployment is created. In the firm, there's a decrease in the quantity demanded of workers. The marginal productivity goes up. You know, there's a lot of different things that I can talk about on the firm side. So those are things that I'm looking at here when I am um, talking about things. You gotta come back though to this formula whenever you're looking at stuff there. Then you have the imperfectly competitive labor market, right? And with the imperfectly competitive labor market, you're not gonna be asked to draw it. That's not what you're gonna be required to do this year. You're gonna be asked to analyze it. There have been very few questions on a monopsony. When I look back over the years, 
There's like maybe two or three. So the thing is, is again, what I would be prepared for if they asked me about a monopsony. Well, this still applies here, right? This formula, because that's gonna happen no matter what. But the thing to remember about a monopsony is that you still have your demand curve that's downward sloping. Um, but this is where you have your supply that is less than your MRC or your MFC. We still use that profit maximizing formula of MRP equals MRC, but the key here, you guys, is it goes down to the supply curve and that gives us our wage rate. Because this is what people are willing and able to supply at the quantity of the workers that are hired. This is my wage rate and this is the number of workers. I could throw in um, a minimum wage on this graph too, right? And that minimum wage here, you might say, if I throw in a minimum wage one right here, some people, if they don't remember to take it down to the supply curve, would be like, there would be no unemployment, you know? But when you're looking at it here, this is where you have to remember, this is the people that would be willing and able to supply their labor at that minimum wage. This is the amount that would be demanded at that wage rate. And so as a result then, you have an unemployment gap that would be there. The only place that, and, and again, that's where you get into binding, you know, minimum wages, and make, making sure that things would happen, but you just have to have it above that um, price that's being asked there. The only place that you wouldn't have unemployment is if they gave a minimum wage where the supply and demand curve intersected each other, right? That would be like the government doing the right thing. So the monopsony I don't see is something that um, like gets asked a lot, uh, but those are things that I would be thinking about with it. Then we come back to that least cost rule, right? And the profit maximizing rule. And remember with those, those are really plug and chugs when you're looking at it. So if they, they would give you, it's like a story problem. It like makes me think about my kids when they were in elementary school or middle school and you see like the story problems and they give you all the data. And if they tell you that the marginal product of capital equals like 500 and the marginal product of labor equals 200 and they tell you that the price of capital that that equals uh, 250 and that the marginal product of labor, that equals 50. And, and then if they were to ask you um, here, should they employ more or less? And now they would be asking you why. That's where you gotta look at like, if I'm doing the least cost rule, right? That's where I'm doing the marginal product of capital has to equal the per cap uh, over the price of capital has to equal the, um, sorry, that's supposed to be the price, has to equal the price of labor. Well, 500, and I'm showing my work on the AP exam, because they're gonna make you, 500 over 250 is two. Does that equal this ratio here of 200 over 50, right? And the answer is no, because that's four. So then the question comes, well, what do you do? Do you employ more or do you employ less? And so if I need to get this two closer to the four, am I going to employ more or am I going to employ less? And it all comes back to diminishing returns, right? My marginal productivity is larger when I employ less. So I would employ less of the capital because marginal productivity goes up with less of that. 
then I would employ more of the labor because my marginal productivity will go down. They ask these questions and I should have like put that in. They ask these questions in a perfectly competitive situation because that's where um, the price won't change with the more or less that I employ, right? That goes along with it. Can you still hear me even though the rain is going on in the background? Okay. I just realized like I'm out of my porch and I realized like the background noise that's happening now. That's my least cost rule. The profit maximizing is the same, you guys, except I'm just doing the MRP over the price equals to each other and it has to equal one. Well, if my ratios are anything greater than one, I'm going to employ more. If my ratios for that are anything less than one, I'm going to employ less, right? Because my goal is to get them not to equal each other, but to equal one. And that's where they can get you, is they could have them equal to each other to start off with, but if they're not equal to one, then I still gotta change those ratios to get there. That other thing that I wanted to just kind of drill in your head here is about how the price of the good equals the wage rate divided by the um, MRP of labor. And it's like, okay, yeah, now I've got like my cheat sheet in front of me and I can use formulas, so I should be able to remember this. But this comes back to MRP equals the MRC. And about how, well, MRP is marginal product. That's how I knew this was wrong when it first had price of labor, where MRP times the price of the good equals the MRC. Well, the MRC is the same thing as the wage rate. And so I'm really just taking this and I'm just shifting my marginal product times the price of the good equals the MRC. The thing is that so like, good about this question is that I could have unit two where I'm talking about the product market and now I like could get into well how could I connect that with unit five which is the labor market you know and I'm just utilizing that formula and shifting things around what would they most likely do they most likely would tell you what the wage rate is they might tell you about their productivity and they might ask you, well, what should they sell this good? What price should they sell this good in the product market? And if you don't see that connection with those formulas, you might throw your hands up in the air. But if you can make that connection, that's how I can just like position things around and I could talk about things um, in that way. So those are the main things that I think about with unit five. I think about perfect competition and I think about how MRP equals the marginal product times the price of the good and they could give me a table, right? And they could have with the table, they could have the quantity of workers and they could give me their total product which would be the amount that they're making. And then that's where then I would be expected um, and I should be automatically going into a marginal product column and an MRP column if, they, if I'm gonna be asked questions. If I get a chart with this, I should know I'm gonna have to make that, right? And that's where then they could give you things and I'll just make it simple and have, you know, three or four workers here. Can we see four? If I've got four workers here and if I know my output of the first worker is going to be, or of no workers, is going to be zero. One worker, maybe they'll make 10. This next worker, maybe they're, we're, hi, do you see that goes from one, three, four? That can't happen. Some things never change when working with me. Okay, so I've got that. My second worker, 
they're coming in and maybe we're at 30 here we've got 40 and then this fourth worker has got 45. i feel like you can see all of that on there right okay so let's talk about a few things here questions that they could ask so first off um they could ask me when does diminishing returns set in so diminishing returns is when all of the resources are held constant output increases at a decreasing rate so i look at my marginal product here and on this ap exam i got to show the one i probably got to show the one where diminishing return sets in and then the one after it right so i've got here my marginal product and then you've got for the the change in total product which i'm going to write out the formula and I'm just going to say 10 um, minus 0 and then divided by the change, which is with one additional worker. And so my marginal product would be 10. My marginal product here would be 20, which would be 30 minus 10. And I go from 2 to 1 worker. Then I've got here a marginal product of 10. And then I've got a marginal product of five. So diminishing returns sets in with the addition of the third worker. Or I could say diminishing returns sets in after the second worker. Look and see how they ask the question. With what worker does diminishing return set in? I'm saying the third worker. If they ask me after what worker does diminishing return sets in, then I'm saying after the second worker. If then they were to ask me, well, if the wage rate, you know, if the price of the good sells for $5 and the workers make a wage rate of $50, how many workers should be hired? The wage rate is the same thing as the MRC. So that's where we go with MRC equals MRP, right? And so MRP is margin, this is why that formula is so important of marginal product times the price of the good. And so if the uh, price of the good is five, my MRP here is 50, 150 and 25. This is where they try to get you. Notice you've got two of them where the MRP equals the MRC. This is happening in the increasing returns. You don't hire in the increasing returns, right? Of my marginal cost curve. You don't hire over here. You hire in the diminishing returns. And so that is where you would hire at the third worker because that's where my MRP equals my MRC. That's where my profit maximizing is. Why? And this is where we get into segmenting with anything. If I were to show this, this is still showing up there. If I were to show this on a graph and if I were to have my MRP, and this is my MRC or my MFC, and this is my profit maximizing number of workers, which I am saying here is at the third worker. Why is this my profit maximizing? Because I'm segmented. Everything prior to that, the MRP is greater than the MRC. So I'm adding to the total profit of the firm. And then up until that point here, it's zero. So I don't add. Every worker beyond three, the additional cost of each worker is greater than the additional revenue that that worker brings in. And so I'm subtracting from my total profit. I'm not suffering an economic loss with that fourth worker. It's just subtracting from the revenue that I had. And so that is why this is the profit maximizing output.
Does anybody have any questions? We've got a couple minutes left here of unit five. Is there anything that I can clarify um, from unit five that we still need to go over or that you still have questions about? And for sure, what you have questions about, somebody else does too. Be prepared for something like this. Wouldn't this be an easy way to ask questions about the factors market? I feel like this is a great way to set things up this year. I can hit diminishing returns. And like they could do things like I, I, I even gave it as one of our practice ones. I could throw in things about the average total cost, the average variable cost, you know, and start connecting things with other units just by having this table here. Do you recommend for the exam um, us doing it like by hand and just uploading photos or typing directly in the doc? I'm gonna be honest, Maya, like I think that I would do the copy and paste. That's like, yeah. I feel like this this week, they're changing things. Like I, and I sent that stuff to you about like changes that they're doing, where like if you come close to submit, or I mean like if you have problems if you email it directly and stuff, like they're allowing that type of stuff. But like, I feel like copying and pasting does not then interfere with anything with regard to stuff. I've trained you so much though in the whole writing way of doing things that I totally get that that's what you wanna do. But it's like, okay, if you do the writing and you take the picture, recognize that and my iPhone's old, so I don't even know if I have this problem. But you got to have your settings set so that it's a JPEG or a PNG that is being um, captured. That seems to be one of the problems with it. And so that's where, but then I even saw like kids were taking pictures with their Chromebooks. And that was a problem. So I don't even know if it gets blamed about like, what is your setting things, but that's what they were saying with that. I just feel like the copy and paste, but I do believe that, that um, I see your question about the Lorenz curve. I do believe that, um, what was I gonna say? Writing out the formulas could be harder if you copy and paste. You just gotta like use your parentheses, I, I feel like, and brackets and that kind of stuff that goes with it. Okay, Lorenz curve, no, Lorenz curve is that last unit, right? 